Hello and welcome to Sparda Lines, your one-stop destination for the civil services preparation. In what could be a new major change that we have brought about, the KS exams is going to be soon announced by the government of Karnataka. The KPSC is also going to issue a notification as well. So we will start focusing from the KS examination point of view. What are the new initiatives? We will not only stick to the Hindu, we will also bring up articles from the Indian Express and also from the Deccan Herald. So all those important articles which are required from your examination point of view will be taken up and we will also come up with the sample questions as well. We have seen what are the kinds of questions that can be anticipated from the KPSC examination so that you do not miss out on any of these parameters. So what are you waiting for? Hit the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also share it with your fellow aspirants as well. So let's look into the first article. The first article says MHA seeks to pacify truckers protesting new hit and run law. First, we have to understand the concept of hit and run law. What is the concept of hit and run law? Let's say for example, you have a two wheeler or there is a person driving a four wheeler or a person driving a truck. This person may have hit another person. So there is a grave accident that has occurred. So there has been a gross negligence in this particular case. This happened to be a negligent driving. This happens to be a rash driving. So this person whosoever is riding or driving that particular vehicle goes and hits another human being. So the minute he hits the human being, he happens to become the victim. So the victim has suffered grave injury or the victim has even passed away as well. And this individual who was riding or driving that vehicle has run away from that particular incident which is called as hit and run. So basically they have hit that individual, the victim has become the major sufferer, ideally they should have taken them to the hospital or should have ensured that there is first aid as well. They do not do so but instead they run away from that particular locality or from that particular spot just to escape from that particular region is what is called as hit and run. Whenever there is hit and run, what we require is a law. In case a person is hit, the victim has a grave injury or for example, the victim might have passed away. So what is the law that we have in place? Currently, if you look into the law, what we have is the Indian Penal Code. So as of now, when you look at the Indian Penal Code, there isn't one single law or a dedicated law for the hit and run case. But as of now, all those incidences are being covered under 304A of the Indian Penal Code. So there wasn't a dedicated provision for hit and run incidents before the BNS. Instead, action in such cases was governed by Section 304A of the Indian Penal Code. As per this section, an individual causing the death of another due to a reckless or negligent act could face a maximum jail term of two years or a fine. And also remember, the same section 304A was also used against the doctors in case of gross negligence. We did discuss recently. So in a similar such instance where there is reckless driving that has taken place, this has led to the victim having grievous injury or death of that particular victim that was being imposed under section 304a of the Indian Penal Code. This is the present law. However, IPC is being replaced with BNS, Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita. So according to the Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita, what does it say? If case there is a victim who has suffered grievous injury, there is a driver or a truck which has hit this particular victim and this victim has passed away. In that case, ideally what should this person do? This person should take him to the hospital, provide him the first aid or ensure that basic amenities are provided to this particular person first aid is provided to this person immediately by the hospital but what if this person does not give importance to humanity runs away from that particular locality just to escape from that particular place had he had taken this person at the right time maybe he could have been saved as well but this person runs away from that particular locality and that region and as a result if at all there is an individual who has committed such a gross negligence there is negligent driving rash driving in that case a person can be imposed with penalty up to 10 years as well. What if there is a gross negligence? But in that case, a person takes the person to the hospital. It can go up to five years. But if it is gross negligence where the person has run away from that particular locality, this person will be imposed with a penalty of about seven lakhs. And at the same time, 
he would also be thrown behind bars for as much as 10 years. So the BNS says that in case of gross negligent rash driving and if the person runs away from that particular spot where the victim has had grievous injury or passed away, this person could be imposed with a punishment for as much as 10 years and with a fine of 7 lakh rupees. Why did the government of India come up with it? That is because in the Indian Penal Code, we did not have any such provision for the hit and run cases. So they had to keep the drivers under check because some of the drivers, not all of them, some of them, some of them used to drink and drive as well and at the same time they also had gross negligence towards the victims as well they used to run away in order to minimize the number of hit and run cases such an initiative was taken they also wanted to increase the accountability of the drivers because in case the victim could be saved it is at that particular moment that the victim could be saved so immediately do not run away ensure that you take them to the hospital despite knowing the loss if you run away from that particular locality the rights of the victim is being violated the victim could have been saved had he been taken to the hospital but that is not being done in the instant case so to keep the drivers under check this hit and run law has been initiated so that they can keep these drivers accountable this will provide great this will also grant victims more rights as well their lives would also be saved and ultimately it is promoting road safety as well so this was the law this is the law that has been initiated under the bns however this particular law is not taken up lightly by the all india motor transport congress why that is because they basically believe that under the earlier law most in most of the cases what was being used to impose penalty was section 304a of the indian penal code and also section 279 of the Indian Penal Code for rash driving. But there, when you look at section 304A, the maximum jail term would be for about two years and subsequently they'll be released. But in this instant of BNS, it will go as much as 10 years as well. So these people, that is from the transport sector, the drivers are not happy with it. They go on to say that if at all, this person is imposed with 10 years of jail or anything more than that, in that case, they will be only languishing behind bars added to it this is not right their consultation is not taken into picture whenever a law is being drafted what we require is a multi-stakeholder approach in this case a consensus was not drawn the organization was not even asked the all india motor transport congress their drivers the stakeholders their members were not even asked and that happens to be another major reason on one side you have escalated the penal principles and on the other side you did not even make the consultation as well so these these people say that these law, this law encourages more punishment and these are unjust punishment says the driver added to it whenever you have these kind of incidents what you will have is immediately mob coming into that particular place not all drivers would want to run away but in case they would genuinely want to help as well then in that case there would be certain people located in that particular circumstance or the spot they may also start hitting the driver yes the driver may have committed a mistake it can be because of the driver or because of the opposite opposite party as well so what have you decided with respect to the mob violence can mob take up the hands such being the case the law does not clarify that so going forward the government should relook into it and should come up with a proper law is what is this article all about so remember the hit and run law is what we have explicitly mentioned in the bns but this was not present in the ipc so direct law with respect to the hit and run was not present under the ipc so there can be a question in your prelims that under ipc there was an explicit provision with respect to the hit and run no there wasn't any but what we were making use of is section 304a of the ipc however for rash driving what we have is section 279 under the indian penal code but that it will not be there in the bns because it has mentioned stringent provisions under the bns now let's look into the next article and the next practice question as we promised you we will be coming up with more practice questions for you all so make sure that you make the best use of it so what is that you have to do look into the question see the question and start writing the answers in the comment section so whenever a question is given please start writing even stop pause the video look into the question look into the answer and start writing commenting on the section and whenever you see a question you also have to give what is so unique about this particular question so arrange the following islands of japan from north to south hokkaido 
Honshu, Shikoku, Kyushu. So what you have to do is arrange these islands from the north to south. So it will be this pattern. So if you go by the pattern, so first what we have is Hokkaido followed by Honshu, followed by Shikoku and followed by Kyushu. So the answer to this would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to jet bursts. So what exactly happened? There was a civilian aircraft that was about to land. So it was making a landing in Japan and at the same time, you also had a coastal guard flight as well. So these two have collided and unfortunately there has it has resulted in about five deaths as well so whenever we speak about such incidents we have to know where the country is what are the main islands or what are the main regions of that particular country so when it comes to japan so the northernmost part happens to be hokkaido this happens to be the northernmost part followed by honshu so japan is not one uniform country which is connected all through the lands no what we have is islands major islands followed by shikoku and finally what we have is kyushu so it has four major islands as part of the assignment you have to put on the comment section there is a strait that passes between the hokkaido and honshu which is the state is what you have to put on the comment section so the Hokkaido is separated by Honshu by one of the state, which is that state is what you have to put on the comment section. Then we have Tokyo, which is present in the island of Honshu. So there can be a question that the island of Honshu has one of the important cities and that happens to be Shonkyu. And remember, we have something called as the Sendai framework for the disaster management. So we have Sendai here. We also have Mount Fuji, which happens to be one of the major volcano striking mountains in Japan. And at the same time, we also have Lake Biwa, which happens to be one of the major lakes. And then you also have the Shinona River. It is also important. Then we also have Nagoya Protocol. If you remember the Nagoya Protocol in Environment and Ecology, this is more to do with for example, the microorganisms, so on and so forth. And then you also have the Cartagena protocol. So major protocols such as Osaka or for example, Sendai framework or Fukushima, Mito are all present in Honshu. And this happens to be the largest and the most populous island in Japan. This can also be very important. So it happens to be the largest island. It also happens to be the most populous island in the country of Japan. That is another important factor. And then what we have is Shik Shikoku. Shikoku happens to be this particular area. That is the third. Shikoku happens to be the smallest of the four main islands of Japan. It is located south of Honshu and is support separated by what is called as the Seto in island. Then finally what we have is Kyushu and Kyushu happens to be the third largest island of Japan. These are some of the important pointers that you have to remember from the preliminary examination point of view. Now let's look into the next article. Rake Chains Peninsula recently seen in news is part of which country? United Kingdom, Iceland, Mexico, South Africa. The answer to this is Iceland. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to Reykjavik Peninsula. So where is it? It is in the country of islands. There are about three to four important parameters from the preliminary examination point of view in this article. What are those? One happens to be Reykjavik Peninsula, which is very, very important from your preliminary examination point of view. Then we have Marapi Volcano. Where is this Marapi Volcano? It is in Indonesia. So Marapi Volcano recently burst out and it was recently in use. Is part of which country? So Marapi Volcano is in the country of, remember, Indonesia. Then what we have is another country, another lava mountain that is present, which is Mount, Mount Lavo. So where is Mount Lavo? It is in Hawaii. It is in Hawaii and this happens to be another important parameter from your preliminary examination point of view. And this article also makes a mention of Fradsil Fall Volcano. Where is it? 
it is in islands so this happens to be very very important so what did we discuss we did discuss about reiki john's peninsula this is in iceland then we have fragadol's fall volcano where is it it is in iceland then from indonesia what we have is marapi volcano and from hawaii what we have is mauna loa all these are some of the important volcanoes that are present world over and we need to remember each of these volcanoes so kindly remember each of them now let's look into the next article the free movement regime allows people residing close to india and which among the following countries to venture 16 km into each other's territory without visa is it nepal is it bangladesh myanmar or thailand the answer to this is myanmar so the free movement regime that we have between india and myanmar what happens let's say for example this is the border area so about 16 kilometers from the border area on either sides people would be able to move freely along the india and border india and myanmar border and from the preliminary examination point of view remember we have four states along the borders of myanmar which are these four states one is arunachal pradesh next what we have is nagaland third what we have is manipur and fourth what we have is mizoram so these are, this is another question that can be asked in your preliminary which are the border states of india along the myanmar region so which are the border states arunachal pradesh nagaland manipur and mizoram four states that we have which has the largest border along the myanmar this can be another question which happens to be arunachal pradesh why because the border area that arunachal pradesh shares with myanmar is about 520 km this happens to be another important factor when you consider there can be another question as well let's say for example we have india and china we also have india and nepal we have india bangladesh we have india pakistan we also have india myanmar as well who protects the border areas of india and myanmar it happens to be the assam rifles so who patrols around this particular region it is the assam rifles who have been deployed along this border to monitor and check the infiltration across the border that is between the india and myanmar border and as part of the assignment who protects the india pakistan border who protects the india bangladesh border who protects india nepal border who protects india and china border is what you have to put on the comment section so what is this free movement regime this free movement regime is nothing but the regime that was established back in the year 2018 prior to that it was also present as well but as a form of a formal attestation india and myanmar had a very good relationship during the 17 and the 18 there was democracy that was present and also there was not much of infiltration that was occurring the insurgent activity was not much during that particular period so what they came up with is called as the free movement regime so this free movement regime is between india and myanmar so this free movement regime allowed tribes from each each place that is from india and myanmar to cross over they did not require a visa all that they did require was a permit card and with this permit card whose validity was for about 1 year they would be able to move freely within the borders of india as well as myanmar why was this allowed that is because people in this particular region have strong ethnic and familial ties across the border if you go back to the year 1826 it was the british who came up with this particular border because it was the british who came up with this particular border before that there was nothing of this sort like the border or for example india or the myanmar all the borders were very flexible as well people used to move easily in order to cater to the family commitments in order to ensure that we support the local trade as well as business so that they can conduct their daily activities because these people are comparatively poor they also engage in barter system as well they have sustainable living as well they want to ensure that they have a sustenance over a period of time how do we ensure that all of these things happen that is to allow them to have free transfer and free movement in manipur's more region there are villages where some homes are in myanmar in nagaland's moon district the border actually passes through 
हाउस ऑफ लॉन्गवा विलेज स्प्लिटिंग हिज होम इन टू टू एज वेल सच इज द इंस्टेंट एंड दैट इज वाई वी हैव दिस फ्री मूवमेंट रेजीम बिटवीन इंडिया एज वेल एज म्यांमार हव अवर ऑफ लेट वॉट वी आर विटनेसिंग इज अ लॉट ऑफ इशूज बिटवीन इंडिया एंड म्यांमार वॉट आर दीज इशूज वन इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू द इंसर्जेंसी नेक्स्ट इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू द इलीगल माइग्रेशन एंड थर्ड इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू द ड्रग्स स्मग्लिंग वॉट इज टू डू विद द इंसर्जेंसी when i speak about insurgency there are couple of groups which are operating from myanmar and these are the major problems for the country according to a paper published by arundam oinam for the center for land welfare warfare studies several insurgent groups such as united national liberation front people's liberation army united liberation front of assam national socialist council of nagaland and small groups of cookies and jomis have built camps in zajian division kachin state and sin state in myanmar so they come in they conduct their illegal activities they kill people engage in extortion racket engage in kidnapping so these people will have to be prevented and in all likelihood this free movement regime could come to an end all because of the insurgent related activities and whenever we have the porous borders this will also lead to illegal migration as well why illegal migration as of now when you look at the country the country is not doing that good it is under the rule of the military regime in 2017 when it was envisaged and in 2018 when this free movement regime was put in place we had democracy that was present in myanmar but right now we do not have democracy in myanmar primarily because of the rule of the military junta and as a result many people who do not like the military are making illegal migration towards india they are entering the borders of india in order to prevent this illegal migration we are taking up this step that is the free movement regime will also come to an end and added to it there are a lot of drug peddlers in this particular place and we also have the golden triangle in this case and as part of the assignment you have to put on the comment section which are the golden triangle drug countries are we speaking about please put it on the comment section so they also make sure that a lot of drugs are peddled into the country of india from myanmar in order to prevent all these activities which has been enhanced due to the free movement regime what we are revoking is the free movement regime apart from that the government has also taken couple of other measures as well basically the government is planning to come up with smart fencing along this particular area and over a period of time the border surveillance will also increase what are the other measures that have been taken by the government of india in the past effective domination of the borders by the border guarding forces through round the clock surveillance patrolling laying nakas establishing observation posts all along the border and strengthening the existence of the bops the riverine segments of the international borders of the country are also being patrolled and dominated with the help of watercraft speed boats floating border outposts and border guarding forces there have been usage of high tech surveillance equipment along with day and night vision devices for further enhancing the border domination so when it comes to border domination what do we understand by it when it comes to law and order we have a word called as area domination what is this area domination imagine a situation where you have a group of cops who come together there are about 10 to 50 cro- Uh, police officers who walk on the road this will create a kind of fear in the minds of those who commit the illegal activities so when large number of cops or police officers walk along a street in order to keep the law and order under check that is what is called as area domination similarly what we have is a word called as border domination where you have large number of patrolling troops or from the bsf or from the assam rifles large number of people start moving about a particular area in order to prevent insurgency or prevent illegal migration that has already been initiated and we already have assam rifles who are present along the border areas so these are some of the measures that have already been taken by the government of india now let's look into the next article this article says my school sculptor's kin delighted over achievement so this article here is speaking about sculptor arun yogiraj in all likelihood you may get a question with respect to the sculpture you may get re- questions related to some of the temple architecture as well and also about rules and govern governance rules about these parts so according to the indian express article which we have picked up we have arun yogiraj who sculpt who, who happens to be a sculptor and whatever he has done his work has been selected and will be kept in the 
in the temple of Ayodhya that is being constructed. His grandfather happens to be Basavanna Shilpi. He was patronized by the kings of Mysore and was trained by Shilpi Siddhanti Siddhalinga Swami who happened to be the royal guru of Mysore palace. Why have we taken this question? Because Siddhanti Siddhalinga Swami happened to be the royal guru of Mysore palace. Basavanna Shilpi had supplied about 64 idols in just 11 months of the Gayatri temple and he runs when we speak about Arun Yogiraj, Arun Yogiraj currently runs what is called as the Brahmarshi Kashyapa Shilpa Kala Shala Trust in Mysore to train children in clay modeling and other skills. And some of Yogiraj's work include 28 feet monolith black granite stone sculpture of freedom fighter of Subhash Chandra Bose, a 12 feet Adi Shankaracharya idol for Kedarnath Uttarakhand, India's largest 10 feet monolithic white marble stone sculpture of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa Mysore, sculptures of Lord Panchamukhi Ganapati, Lord Mahavishnu, God Buddha, so on and so forth at various temples across India. And the two other sculptors have also worked for the Ram Mandir temple which soon to be opened up and these two people are GL Butt of Bengaluru and Satyanarayan Pandey of Rajasthan. The trust will install one of these three idols inside the sanctum. So the one which is selected right now is about Yogirat sculpture and the other two will be placed within the premises of the temple. These are some of the important facts that you have to remember. Now let's look into the next article. This article says startups invited to apply for agriculture grant challenge too. What is this article speaking about? The article here is seeking applications from the startup. Who are the startups? Any country or any company which has had opened its company and it is less than 10 years of age that is it has become a major company which is into couple of new initiatives it has come up with new innovations it has come up with multiple programs of its own but then it has not passed since its establishment it is not more than 10 years so any company or startup should be registered in india and if such a startup is beneficiary to be an indian startup and has less than 10 years of experience that will be applicable to apply for this agriculture grant challenge so what what is this agriculture grand challenge basically this they will come up with technology they will come up with programs innovations to ultimately increase the shelf life minimize post harvest losses in the agriculture technologies for plant pest and disease detection monitoring and mitigation and technology for on-site driving and grading of cash crops so in the animal husbandry and ally group the call is for realizing novel artificial insemination techniques for cattle developing cost effective on-farm pregnancy detection kits for cattle to detect PAB, AGA, other hormones, affordable form level mustis detection and fast and accurate method for detection of contaminants in the milk. So if there are these startups who are able to provide solution to such problems, they would be able to apply and they would also get an investment of about 25 to 50 lakhs. These are some of the important pointers from the preliminary examination. So this agriculture grand challenge was officially launched at Bengaluru Tech Summit 2023 on December 2023. CCAMs have been invited by startups to apply before January 31st. Now let's look into the next article. This article here is about India and Maldives relationship. We have the new president who is appointed in Maldives. There were elections that took place and after the elections, we have the new president who is reinstated in the country of Maldives. This is kind likely to have repercussions for India. Why? Because the president who is right now elected happens to be one of the close considerates of China. So this is where India will be major sufferers in a likely repercussion what we have is india and japan had entered into a joint agreement for joint hydrographic service in the maldivian waters now india has been asked to withdraw from this hydrographic survey and at the same time indian military has also been asked to move away from the maldives as well so there are two significant impact one there was an agreement signed between India and Maldives for the hydrographic survey. India has been withdrawn from that particular survey and at the same time there was Indian military presence in Maldives. So this Indian military presence has also been asked to withdraw 
from Maldives. So the author in this particular case says that in all likelihood China may be replaced. So what is the apprehension of Maldives? Maldives basically feels that India could likely use these data for its military activities. But the author in this particular case goes on to say it is China which will make use of such data for the military activities. So if at all a country can be trusted when it comes to such activities, it happens to be India and not China. What does China do? China will start making use of this data for the military purposes. For example, whenever you say the hydrographic data, a hydrographic data can be used both for the civilian as well as for the military purposes. When it comes to the civilian purposes, marine scientists maintain the data helps in advancing non-military objectives such as navigational safety, how a particular ship should go, what is the depth that the shipment should have and what, what is the way that it should take. All this will be defined under the hydrographic survey and subsequently we will have the marine scientific research, environmental monitoring, are there any corals in that particular region, what is the energy that we can extract from that particular place, so on and so forth, surveys will be done as part of the hydrographic survey. This will also have military advantages as well. What are the military aims? One is surveillance of the coastal installations and the war fighting assets. So in case there are war fighting assets, are there any submarines that are present, are there any military installations that are present all of it will be understood as part of the hydrographic data. Now, since China in all likelihood will be conducting this hydrographic survey, what is the advantage for China? As of now, India is having its place in Maldives. But once India withdraws, China will step into the picture. And once China comes into the picture, it will be able to see what is the speed of the water in this particular locality. What is the capable, how can we able to track the foreign ships in this particular place? What is the temperature profile in this particular area? Are there any fast currents that are present? Why are all these important? The temperature, the pressure, the current speed, all that is important is because if at all there is a submarine that comes up, the submarine would be able to look into all these areas and also ensure that it is not detectable in this particular place. So a submarine in order to have advanced capabilities, it has to understand that particular region, temperature, current speed, pressure, so on and so forth. If China is able to understand the hydrographic survey, come up with numbers and also precisely get these numbers, it will be able to design submarine in such a way that other countries will not be able to detect the submarines of China. So the idea being that they will be able to extract all the important information for the civilian purposes and at the same time for also military purposes as well. This military purpose that they are using, they will be able to understand the water speed, the pressure, the temperature and would be able to develop new submarines. And when there are new submarines, other countries would not be able to detect these submarines and ultimately it is China's advantage where it will be able to operate submarines in that particular locality. So the author in this particular case goes on to say, if at all a threat can be created by any country, it is China which can create a threat. It is China which can collect the data and it is not India. So we have to wait and watch what could be the future likely consequences is what is this article all about. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. So if you are liking these initiatives, please do hit the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also share it with your fellow aspirants as well. Thank you for watching. All the best.